President Donald Trump's order blocking American healthcare funding to groups abroad, which counsel, provide referrals, or even provide information about abortion, is now in effect. The rule has reproductive rights advocates reeling, and it is significantly broader than similar bans which have been in place intermittently, really, since 1984. Those past actions are limited to about $600 million worth of funding, covering family planning mostly. Trump's version, however, takes that up to 11. It's called the Protecting Life and Global Health Policy, and it will restrict nearly $9 billion worth of foreign health care assistance. Roughly $6 billion of that goes to supporting programs for HIV and AIDS services, mostly in African countries. It's expected to take several months, however, before the new policy's impact is fully felt on the ground. Nonetheless, let's dig into the implications of this particular policy. Liling Tan joins us now live from New York with more data on this story. Um, Liling, Democrats have routinely rescinded this rule when in the White House, Republican presidents have done the opposite. Are there any studies, is there any hard data to show what effect this gag rule has had on health policy outcomes? Hi there, Rama. Yes, in fact, there have been some studies showing the impact of this policy when it has uh, been in place before. And one of the more widely cited studies is one done by Stanford University in 2011 that indicated that the policy under George W. Bush uh, during his term as president between 2001 and 2009 that had resulted in the rise in a rise in the abortion rates in several sub-Saharan African countries where that policy uh, was in effect. Now, part of that, according to several NGOs, is because many of the organizations uh, affected by that policy, they conduct abor abortion procedures or, as you mentioned, provide information uh, on abortions. These are the same services that also provide family planning, reproductive health services, um, contraception. They provide contraception to to the public. And some of these organizations also had received uh, USAID. Now, once that access to, uh, to contraception from USAID, uh, once that uh, funding for these contraception services had been taken away from them, the number of unwanted or unintended pregnancies increased and that resulted in a rise in the abortion rates. However, the other camp, looking at the argument from the other camp, conservative news magazine National Review picked apart that study, criticized it for using incomplete data, saying that the data showed uh, contraception use in sub-Saharan African, African countries had actually risen during the period and that the conclusion of the rise in abortion rates uh, could have been a result of more uh, complete reporting by countries that participated in the study. And also the Good Market Institute says the abortion rates in sub-regions of uh, Africa had actually held steady since 1990. So there has been conflicting studies. The problem, though, is that even though there is data out there, even though there are these research uh, papers that have been done, Supporters and opponents of this debate have used that information or picked apart their, the information to support their own opposing points of view. Indeed. Uh, let's, let's talk about the previous restrictions, though. That applied to roughly $600 million worth of healthcare funding uh, for foreign operations, obviously. But now it's been vastly expanded. It's affecting about $8 billion worth of programs. So what was the rationale for this expansion? Yes, well, you are quite right. It's uh, it's widely expanded to cover, as you mentioned, nearly $9 billion worth of funding for foreign NGOs. Um, that part of it is because this policy, the Trump's version of this policy, is being expanded to cover um, services uh, that go into malaria eradication, maternal and child health, HIV and AIDS prevention and treatment, even Zika care. And the message, the rationale behind this is that the U.S. is trying to send a clear message to the world that it will not stand by, uh, it will not support abortion, and that it is essentially pro-life. Indeed, but doesn't that, by extending it rather to malaria, HIV, things that absolutely have nothing to do with abortion, isn't the State Department and by extension the United States government uh, essentially shooting itself in the foot here? 
Well, yes, in a way, and that's what a lot of um, pro-choice groups will tell you, that this is really contradictory because it, it's trying to say it's, it's trying to send a message that it's pro-life, but it's actually uh, putting a lot of lives at risk when it pulls, uh, pulls out this funding. Now, it sounds like the U.S. government is trying to more widely apply this pro-life policy um, to groups and facilities and organizations that have a link to work associated with abortion provisions or in abortion information provisions, no matter how tenuous. But a senior official from the State uh, Department in a, in a briefing had tried to explain that what this is really is a realignment of funding, that, um, that it isn't so much about decreasing the funding to these programs as it is about um, uh, uh, changing funding provisions. So it's not actually taking money away from these programs. It's uh, when these agreements with these NGOs uh, come due or due for renewal, uh, they'll have to decide or declare their position on this in order to receive more funding. So that point is still, it's still a little uncertain and we'll have to see how that, more, uh, how that becomes more apparent when this policy is rolled out. Indeed. We'll leave it there for the time being. Thank you for the update. That's Liling Tan live in New York.